The Irish Rally Podcast is brought to you in association with Tech and Tools, PFT Travel, SCS Productions and Rally Connection. Williams, welcome back. Uh, we certainly didn't um, think we would be seeing each other this soon. I mean, it's always so lovely to see you, but it's so soon. I know. It's only just, it, it, not even two months, I don't think, really, since we spoke, is it? Yeah. Lovely to see you too. Um, again, you kind of wish it was under different circumstances, really. But um, yeah, it's nice to be here. It is. It's lovely. We were just talking about how special it is to kind of have memories and pay tribute to people and basically like you know this uh is obviously going to be at the end of our episode um that we so kind of so thoroughly enjoyed um the first week in april i think it was and then you know the last like literally within a week you know we got the most heartbreaking news um in the world and as we said um off air like it just would have been the strangest thing to put out an episode uh, with Bex Williams where, you know, Craig Breen wasn't um, kind of, you know, talked about or mentioned or whatever. So this is, this is just going to be so beautiful to hear you talk about him in your own words and, um, you know, just get to kind of, as you said yourself, like when you're talking about him, it makes him feel closer. Uh, yeah, it does. It does. And it's been, you know, for, I think, like you say, it's, it was just the worst news that, you never ever ever want to hear um but yeah talking about him and talking about him to people talking about stories memories you know number one I'd rather have him here right now yeah. sending stupid text messages and and saying random things and and seeing him compete but to be able to, to talk about him and to remember him is the way to keep that memory alive and and to honor him in in that way because the more we talk about him the more he does feel, you know, I, I enjoy talking about him in, because I enjoy talking about him when he was alive. Yeah. And I, I would rather him be here now, but I'm, I'm happy to tell stories, share stories, because he does feel closer in that sense. Yeah. And it is, you know, everybody spoke about um, Craig's massive personality and how he was always basically such good crack and like literally radiated pure joy. Um, and so, telling those stories and speaking of him obviously brings that back to the surface for either you recalling the story or like the person listening and hearing the story yeah i think so and you mentioned a word there radiate is so so true i wrote an article about him yesterday and it was one of the words i used to yeah. to describe how he was especially and i think we all really remember you know you always remember that the most recent memories of him and the pictures we've all seen in in the past month or so everywhere across social media because the outpouring of, of grief from the fans around the world has just been colossal mm -hmm. um but he radiated absolute joy you know from from sweden the images and thinking of in particular i think everyone will remember those they will be you know the when you think about craig breen you think about that huge smile and the yeah. joy and and the crazy reactions of the stage ends this week. Mm -hmm. Certainly I do anyway, because yeah. it was the happiest I'd seen him in such a long time. And I think the same for everyone. And because he was so happy, then that kind of, you, you felt that yeah. because it was authentic. It wasn't made up happiness. It wasn't put on, it was, it was real joy. And yeah, loved seeing that. Loved seeing so much about him. I know and it is like it's so funny but he genuinely like his smile was huge and it lit up a room like and the one thing is, that, that kind of struck me the most um within the few days or the you know the few weeks after his passing was the the picture that was shared the most was that picture where he's laughing his head off and so mm. literally like he just like was like what um like he just he was so so happy um 
and you know obviously then his attitude and like the, the huge kind of um amount of quotes that are coming from him in the sense where he talk, talked about life being short and having to enjoy it and i think like for me that's what really stood out like he just loved all of this like everything to do mm. with in every moment of it even the hard moments like he seemed to love them purely because he was grateful for the learning in them like and it's, it's yeah so infectious it was infectious and you know i i said it during the time i've i never received so many messages across social media as i did the week after craig passed and and still now people are sharing stories um the the, the common theme it's all about his character it's all about the way he was and a lot of them would include the words and, and i said this at the funeral because it was so in my mind that i never i never met him but i felt like i knew him yeah and the reason people felt that was because he shared who he was readily he didn't hide his character you know when he was going through tough times and he went through quite a few very tough times in his career he had to you know battle back from tragedy but battle to get his drives as well. Nothing came easily to Craig, even though there might be a raft of people who out there who think that he had it on a plate. He didn't. Yeah. You know, he was a warrior in that sense. And he showed his emotion, whether it was down in the depths or whether it was, you know, up in the rafters. And it, it, because of that ease of character, ease of expression, happy to express himself, people bonded with that yeah. i i believe truly believe that you know his legacy is that he humanized the sport he humanized rallying because at the top level it can become machine like yeah. you know firing out these times having the pressure of manufacturers on your shoulders you turn into something else and craig never did turn into that yeah. He kept his character and he kept the joy of, of what he was doing. Yeah. And yes, okay, there were tough times where the joy was very small, but still there was joy. Yeah. Um, but he definitely humanized the sport. A hundred percent. Like and I think like that for me, like as as one individual, I can hand on my heart say that that's exactly what it is, you know, and it's the thing that like <sighs> I was actually talking about this with somebody yesterday about how when you're driving um, a lot of the time, like for most people, not everybody, but for most people, and again, particularly at Craig's level, you have to switch off. Like you cannot be emotional to a certain extent because like you have to be concentrated with what you're doing. Um, yeah. And so you sort of have to, you have to have this seriousness about you, but that was the thing about him. It, how he was able to do what he did behind the wheel but also still as you say be the human and actually genuinely have the emotion feel the emotion show the world like it was just like it genuinely was an incredible thing to watch um yeah and it was such i don't it's, it's like it's mad but like it's such a credit to him himself like but his parents his friends his community like it was just um you don't think about these things when the person's alive um and that's probably we should we should be doing more of that actually as humans in general but you know once somebody's not there anymore and you start to actually think about who they are and the impact they've had like mm. he, he i think he's had a huge away. impact yeah i think it's going to be la you know it'll be it's a lasting impact but you're yeah. right we should celebrate people more while they're actually here yeah. and and recognize their strengths and and what they bring to mm -hmm. to life and and to the people that they know more exactly. than, than when they've gone i mean it's it's been fabulous to see so many beautiful tributes to him mm -hmm. and that's testament to his character yes his driving skill we all loved him for that and he was remarkable behind the wheel but it, it's his character which is is going to be what everyone remembers know. you know the the way he handled himself and as you say it, you're right it's it's all come from his wonderful upbringing with with ray and jackie and he always used to say that you know whenever he was crying whether it be you know he'd normally kind of cry when he was very very happy yeah. you know the rally finland podium springs yeah. to mind you know when he said i'm coming across all wrong now because i'm i'm crying and he always used to say you know it's 
it's it's my mammy's fault you know she, she <laughs> raised me yeah, soft yeah, yeah. um but you know he had a wonderful upbringing and you know when i sat down with him for the backstories podcast a good couple of years ago now um he told me in that podcast about all these you know videos and how his mum would film everything yes. when he was young and i said oh you i need to get my hands on on these videos i need to see them he's like oh i'm not sure no i'm not, I'm not sure we can we, we can go there and then within 24 hours i had the first video through and oh. then i had more and more and more and you had this little insight into you know craig breen as a you know five six year old seven year old all these videos that mam jackie had had filmed and he, he you know he put on the, the text message and it just reinforced what he'd said in the podcast already that he'd had such a you know a wonderful upbringing and a wonderful childhood and yeah. couldn't have asked for more and you know that you know that happiness that joy started started then and you know how lucky we are to to see that he wasn't afraid to, to show that he didn't have to be like so many people think they need to be like the tough man tough guy yeah. have this layer this persona in front of him and i i think that that truly has touched us all now yeah um and when people in the, within the championship you know realize maybe a little bit more that it's not it's not a bad thing to show your emotions and that's the thing like oddly enough we know that it's a male dominated sport but again so important for a guy of his caliber um to come out um over and over again and literally show the emotion whether it was pure joy or um the sa sadness or frustration or whatever it was like it actually when you think about that like it it genuinely is such a, a different thing to see within the sport but yeah. such an important thing to see as well like and it is we could see it then and the last an impact of it when you saw the i suppose the reaction to his death and the sadness that was coming from again a lot of men um and like tears and upset and you know just even still to this day like we were talking about it like we're still coming across on social media you know um just randomly you'll see a tweet from somebody or something and it'll be like i still can't believe it and you know that's yeah I mean, like a lot of the time like that could be a grown man and it's lovely to see them like actually acknowledging and sharing their emotion because it's just so tragic and he is genuinely such a loss um yeah it is he yeah it's a it's a huge vast chasm of a gap that he leaves in so so many lives you know most importantly his his close family and friends you know he was so cherished um so so cherished by so many and it it, it is a it is a massive hole yeah and the you know the remarkable thing i found anyway during you know sort of the whole process and like the funeral particularly is when it struck me was how much they have actually been graceful in their sharing of craig over the last 15 years with, with the rest of us um, mm. and even in their grieving process even in the toughest of times for them they still open arms for the word you know because we know who he was and what he was but what he meant to people as well and yeah it was just like arms around the world like not just arms around each other but arms around us all kind of thing and it was just the saddest thing but kind of the most beautiful thing and that i've ever seen and it, it just you know it's so mad that it's actually real that it actually happened you know um but one of the things that i wanted to talk about with you was because we've actually discussed this already but like the closeness of um you know the community the camaraderie within the community is a huge thing mm. uh, people don't understand it until they're in it and it's something mm. i think the Rally community is really proud of but particularly i have found with working on rallies like whenever you're actually in a work environment um and so your team gets very kind of close um and like you obviously had so much experience with craig like between sort of like working with him in terms of um the media stuff and, and him being a competitor but then those years where he kind of would have popped in and out to work with you and yeah. stuff like in the you know that time that mad time that you get to spend together like that must have been so special at the time and even more special now like when you think back 
Yeah, it it is. I mean, I'm really lucky to say I have wonderful memories of him to look back on. Um, and there's, I think we first met in, I think it was 2000, well, properly in 2010. He was well on the radar um, with doing like a few WRC events in 2009. And you could see he did a huge amount of events in 2009. Mm -hmm. He was everywhere, just absolutely everywhere. It was like the name Craig Breen was on, was on everyone's lips. But we first met um, on a, properly on a bus and a bus which took 65 hours to get back from Turkey to the UK. He competed at Rally Turkey and um, yeah, the volcano in Iceland, which is unpronounceable. I can't remember what the hell it was called. And I could not, yeah. couldn't say it anyway, even if I could remember it. But that had exploded, you know, air traffic had been grounded and M Sport said, right, two buses. If you want to come on the bus, come on the bus. And on the bus with me was Craig and Gareth Roberts, Jeff, his co-driver. And, you know, we got to chatting on the bus and kind of got to know each other then properly because he, because yeah. he was at such a, uh, you know, he didn't see him all the time on the championship, but I really got to know him then over a lot of Haribo consumed and marshmallows because that's all we had on the bus to eat. And then we got to our first, um, I remember it so well because I used to remind him of it all the time. Um, we got to our first hot food stop, which was about eight to 12 hours into the journey, let's say, and everyone was desperate for hot food. And it was a McDonald's, obviously, in, in the middle of Romania or somewhere. And we all just rushed off the bus and, you know, credit cards because no one had any currency and plugs because we all wanted to charge things. And I remember arriving at the last charging point with my plug like, and Craig was and we were just side by side staring at each other. And it was like dueling banjos in the background of who's gonna get this plug. And he just, he widened his eyes in the way that he would kind of the puppy dog eyes and said, I really need to charge my phone. I'm waiting to hear if I'm doing the Pirelli rally this weekend. And I was like, shit, I've got no comeback for that. Cause I just want to look at Twitter on the bus. <laughs> yeah. So I was like, okay, you know, go for it better get on the podium and um, and he put the plug in and he, he didn't even say thank you he just walked off to get his mcdonald's <laughs> and jaff was with him and jaff had the the biggest smile in the service park he was famous for it and you know this this huge array of teeth appeared from jaff and he was like sorry about him bex <laughs> and off he went it was like as long as jaff is by his side because he hadn't quite got his charm up to up to spec at that point, Mr. Breen. <laughs> um, but that was our kind of our first proper meeting, spending 65 hours on a on a bus together and fighting over the last charging point. Um, and, uh, you know, I was lucky to be able to, to know them both and to, you know, see the relationship they had, which was really special. Mm -hmm. You know, Jaff was Craig's main man. Yeah. Um, and, you know, up until the day Craig died, he talked about him, you know, almost on a daily basis. There would be a reference somewhere to Jaff on nearly every event that he went to, whether it be on his helmet, whether it be chatting, you know, he kept him exceptionally close to his heart. Yeah. And again, you know, I think, you know, when we when we speak about Jaff, like, I think that is possibly where Craig, he, so shockingly, and so kind of brutally had to learn the hard way at such a young age like what it mm. is you know like we have to cherish this stuff we have to cherish these people and because it can all change in an instant and he knew full well what that felt like and i think that's probably why he ended up being just one of those special people that reminded you to live every moment as yeah i think last. like and I even so. in that jack was always with them like they were always learning yeah. together and growing together like and it was just like it was such a beautiful friendship um but i would imagine with craig like every friendship was quite quite beautiful you know um because he was just that type of character he was know? invested in people that i think that's what it was about him sometimes to his detriment <laughs> because <laughs> You know, he'd always ask things about you. He's, he'd, and this is what endeared him to so many people, I think, within the service park. You know, he wasn't just, he wasn't just someone that sat down to be interviewed. 
Yeah. He'd ask about you. He was interested in people. Yeah. But sometimes he'd get talking to people and then he couldn't get out of it because they would talk him to death. <laughs> so sometimes to his de detriment, you know, he, he wouldn't be able to get away from some people because he'd ask something and then, oh, yeah, half an hour later, they're still talking. Um, but that's what was lovely about him is that he would ask things about your life. I mean, it, the most random thing now, like the, the closest memory of, of Rally Sweden is... Um, the pre-event press conference, it was Craig and Oit Tanak. I can't remember who else now at the top of my head. And Craig walks into the little green room before the, the press conference and I just had my hair done. It was a little bit more redder than normal. It was a little bit shorter. And the first thing he said, as soon as he walked through the door, he went, oh, you've had your hair done. Oh, he said, it's so vibrant. Look, Oit, look at her hair, isn't it lovely? And Oit is just like, what? Because I've been there about five minutes, we've been chatting. He said nothing about my hair, and it's it's the first thing Greg said when he came in, and it just made me laugh because it's so him, you know, it's so him to notice details and say whether he liked it or not. I mean, he would never be rude, but he always yeah. give you his his truth, whether it be good or bad. <laughs> um, and you know, I, I just yeah, that that kind of sticks in my mind. But this, I've got you know, I, I, so many of his, you know friends and family have wonderful memories to to look back on over the years and you mentioned um you know the tragedy with jaff which it so was and that could have completely broken craig that could have stopped his career in its tracks Completely. And, yeah. and you know a lot of people thought it was going to um because he was at such a young age and he was you know the character that he was then maybe he didn't come across as being a strong person um, because he readily showed that emotion but he was a you know true warrior he got back in the car within you know a month at a small rally here in wales the nikki grist stages and then he was in rally finland you know about two months after it all happened he was in rally finland yeah. an event where you need confidence courage yeah. um to be able to to push on those stages and you know, with Paul Nagel alongside him, really, you know, helping him, guiding him through. Yeah, he did it. But I, I remember vividly, you know, being there, um, heading towards the first media zone, first point where they came in for service on the first day, and I'm mm -hmm. chatting away on, on the radio, as you know very well, um, yourself, chatting <laughs> away, talking to all the the drivers um, yeah. up and down the field. I can see Craig's car coming in in the distance. And I walk over to, to Craig and I'm you know, saying, oh, Craig, please come in. Can I go and have a chat with him now? And I can see him get out of the car and he is white. Mm -hmm. And OK, he had a pale complexion anyway. He was never a bronzed Adonis <laughs> um, in that sense. He Very was always much. a little bit pale. <laughs> um, but he was, you know, whiter than normal. You could tell that the strain of doing the rally was was on his face. So I just, you know, threw back. I was like, oh, at least, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll be back to the back, back with you in a couple of minutes. Put a record on, or record, <laughs> out to <of> date. Uh, <laughs> it, whatever. <laughs> Put some music on. I'll be back with you in a minute. Yeah. Um, and I just went over and just lowered my mic and just hugged him. And he just fell into my arms and he was sobbing, like properly like, getting out of his system. And he did it. Look, 30 seconds. And then he was like, you know, OK, it's hard. You know, you could just kept saying it's hard. And it was. You could see how difficult it was for him. The strain was showing on his face. Yeah. Um, but, you know, OK, he managed to get through it. Accident at the end of it. But he did yeah. the rally. It, the most important thing was he was back. And yeah. it was always going to be hard for the next however many events. Yeah. But you could. And I, I think. I had my I was in awe of what he did there because I I couldn't believe someone could actually have the strength to do it, but he did. Um and it's testament to everyone around him who supported him to be able to do that. And thank goodness they did, because we wouldn't have seen such, you know, yeah. brilliant performances over the years if he hadn't have just got straight back in the car and that first little rally here in Wales with, with Di Roberts at his side, Gareth's brother, 
you know that was a, it was a low key thing that they did but that was important as well it was yeah. you know jeff's family played a, such a huge part in putting craig back together they did really and like th that's the thing and again I, it's I, I do genuinely believe that it is um a testament to his character that and probably a testament to their relationship as well um and the, the strength of their friendship where like you know jack's family were craig's family and they yes. were much a part of his journey you know before and after um and like again it's all just it's all just a testament isn't it like to who these guys were um and in particular you know the fact that you know the fact that die was in with craig on his next event like i mean that's beautiful stuff like mm -hmm. um, yeah and yeah genuinely that's it like it's that it's that love for the sport the love and respect for each other and that's what gives you the strength like you know yeah. and bex like you have been oddly enough um you have actually because it's probably something that you never would have guessed but you have actually been there to literally witness so much of craig's mm. um and so many of the ups and the downs and like you literally have such an incredible bird's eye view of it like it you know i'd say the memories you have are absolutely incredible even considering you know like you were in ireland working um and covering the irish tarmac championship the year that he came back home and you know that strikes me as a time when you know on paper his head could have dropped because obviously it was quite a tough year and and, and you know we didn't have a plan of attack um, as such, and he certainly would have preferred to be at the WRC or, you know, at kind of fighting for that level. But honestly, like, when you look back now, it genuinely seemed to just cement his, well, obviously his pure love for Irish rallying. Um, mm. But his foundations for, like, I don't know, it's, for me, looking back on it now, it just seems like it's cemented his pure passion and why he started and yeah again you were there to see all that like you were with him at every event and seeing the whole thing yeah I, I feel very lucky that i was really very lucky and i think that year was a rejuvenating year because he told me that he was probably in one of you know apart from obviously the, the tragedy with jaff he was in a pretty dark place within the the november the december the previous year when you know the the drive wasn't continuing on in in citroen and he wasn't sure what the next steps were going to be for him um what you know what he was going to do what what was next because there were no offers on the table at that point after everything had just kind of fallen apart and i remember he's you know gone and spent time in in australia where his sister was living at the time and had a you know a real regroup yeah. and and i think it was you know from from conversations with him it was you know the family again and and ray who was like you know well if, if you want it you've got to go out and, and go and get it and you know for the first time in a long time he was picking up the phone to sponsors you know yeah. i'm gonna i'm gonna rally at home i'm gonna do the irish time Match championship you know would you like to sponsor me um but he'd gone from this kind of this darkness this depression because he'd been at such a high yeah. and now it was like where do i go next and i think we we all we can all empathize with that because we've all been like that at some point in our lives it's like what's next what what's going to happen but he was the driving force to then start ringing people and get the sponsorship together and that was so successful that he'd pretty much run out of space on the car oh. to get all the sponsors on and you know I, on the overalls for for paul and for paul and craig you know they were practically covered we were like we were laughing that they were <laughs> tattoos of sponsors on them but you know that i think that was rejuvenating that he had this support and and then of course the events were going well um and he won the championship at the end of it but he was rallying at home getting the support at home and during that year then you know the the door at hyundai was opening and so it was this the opportunities are still there it's not over it, that year may, maybe people will look at 2019 and think oh maybe well that was the gap year and, and i i don't think that at all i think that's the year when he really kind of came into his own because he took 
ownership of what he was doing um, instead of being employed by the manufacturers he was going out there and getting his own funding together and then you know lo and behold the door opens at another team and, and he's off again yeah and i think as well what it proved to the world maybe at large is that he was not giving up he wanted to be in a rally mm. car whether it was in ireland or across the world it didn't matter this is yeah. where he was happy it's where he was at his, his best and like that as a, as a manufacturer essentially an employer like that's what you're looking at you're looking for that person yeah. that's never going to give up like yeah you know, and, I know that, and he never was going to give up and i think you know seeing the joy from him on those irish events um you know there was a lot of it was a lot of fun it was a lot of fun and i think you know one of the best memories i take away from that year you know other than them winning the championship obviously it was being at the west cork rally with them and miko haven and who came over to compete in the escort yeah. and just the laughs that we had and someone reminded me someone sent me a message and i'd forgotten all about it i put a, a post up in tribute to craig and written on there about you know the food and he never he didn't like fatty food he was <laughs> he was a plain and simple boy when it came to food and someone sent me a message saying oh you know i i helped you order pizzas at the west cork rally <laughs> and craig craig was delighted that we were getting these pizzas i was like oh my god i completely forgot about that um but yeah that you know that that weekend there was was pretty special we had some we had some laughs and on the sunday night you know we had we had even more laughs and dancing right, and like, the family were there and it was it was just it was a bit of a hangover the next day for me um, but you know this those kind of times you look back on and think oh yeah you know it wasn't just the, the competition side of things that the social side was was always there as well but yeah. i loved being you know roaming around doing social media on the irish tarmac championships as well as doing the the tv and the little videos i filmed of 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 Craig, which have popped up now that I'd forgotten about, um, and then just chatting the chat on road sections or waiting to start stages, and yeah, just lovely things, banter, you know, so much crack. It was incredible, and yeah, it's, it, there's some you know really good times to to look back on. I know, and that is like that genuinely is the beautiful thing about rallying, and you know, I I speak about it all the time. Obviously, when I'm and you'll be the same, like when you're chatting to like an actually you know sort of interviewing people as such like because that is that's the thing that everybody goes back to is the camaraderie and the crack and just the genuine yeah. fun and that, banter and friendship that's the important part of it you know yeah. it, if it wasn't there you wouldn't keep doing it for as many years as you do because you would be you, you know the competition alone is fantastic but you need the friendships you yeah. need all of that it's a community yeah. it's a sometimes it can be a bit of a bubble because you're yep. with the same people all of the time, but it is a genuine community. Um, Absolutely, and it's, it, it is, it's that community that kind of, you know, it, it holds you together and um, it's it's there to like throw you up in the air and celebrate you whenever you're going well. And it's there yeah. to hold you whenever things are not, when you can't hold yourself up essentially. You know what, shockingly, we, we were doing some social media interviews with the drivers recently in Portugal. And one of the questions was, you know, outside of the competition sphere of 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 WRC, what do you what do you love the most about it? Is it you know the travel, the food, what you know, whatever? What 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 kind of element is your favourite? And Oitanak took me completely by surprise when he said, he said, well, he said for me, it's it's you. And I thought, oh, me? That didn't mean just me. He was like, <laughs> it's you, and it's it's you to my cameraman and and the sound man. It's you. He said, it's it's everyone in the championship. It's it's the community he said that's the most important thing to me other than driving the car exactly and i was genuinely shocked by that <laughs> to be honest i know like and i mean but it just goes to show you it's there no matter what level you're at or what job you're doing mm. like it's there and it's it is that feeling of family and friendship that really sustains the whole thing and it is you said it a few seconds ago but it's what keeps us going it's actually what keeps mm. us there all these years later um yeah. Have can now this is probably a ridiculously difficult question. Um, but can you even your like top three, but do you have like a favorite or top three favorite memories of Craig? Like the moments that literally like just have never left you the last few weeks? <laughs> oh my god, that's a difficult question. 
I can't say I've got a, there's so many, there's so many. That's the problem. I could never yeah. categorize them, I had a them into <laughs> top three moments. Um, uh, but I think, you know, just that whole, the crack at the West Cork rally is definitely up there because the, the whole weekend was just, was just beautiful. Yeah. Um, uh, after the, the press conference in Sweden and, you know, this this I've thought about a lot in the past couple of days, actually. Um, I talked to you about when he was at the media zone in Finland and he was upset and, and we hugged and kutched, is what we call it here in Wales. Um, and after the event, uh, after the event had finished in Sweden, he was coming to the press conference. I kind of went out in, into the corridor to meet him and he was coming in with Sean Hassett. Mm -hmm and he was kind of laughing and smiling and he saw me and he just gave me the biggest smile and he started laughing and he gave me the biggest hug and just held me so tight he was squeezing me and he was like oh it's all mad it's all mad because of all the the team orders that had you know gone wrong and he'd eventually taken second position and and i remember that so much now be mm -hmm. because of because of what's happened and the contrast of you know those two hugs and everything that has happened yeah. in between 2012 and and 2023 and everything that he went through to, to be living his dream and that you know desperate hug back then to this joyful oh. you know i'm back kind of hug in in 2023 uh, but there's so many memories tony and there's stupid oh, ones of craig and i mentioned it before we started you know the text messages he would send me of just random things just silly things he loved twix chocolate bar and I remember posting something on Instagram that I'd found this winter spice Twix. Immediately he was, you know, messaging me, where is it? Where did you find it? Can you get me one? I need to taste it. And then he'd send me pictures of white chocolate ones or salted caramel, which was his favorite. Whenever he had one, he'd be like, I've got a Twix. Look what I so, got. You know, things like that. And again, another recent memory, because the last rally I saw him at was in Faf mm -hmm. as part of the ERC, which was um, a couple of weeks after Sweden. And um, during Sweden, we'd had this moment where obviously it's a cold rally and um, everyone's got a little bit of coughs and colds from the winter or whatever. And he was just about to be interviewed, filmed. Julian was interviewing him. Uh -huh. And cameraman noticed that he had, Craig had a little bit of a bat in the cave. So he had a little bit of something going on on his nose. So the cameraman just reached in and went whew, straight across Craig's <laughs> nose. <laughs> And he was like, what's just happened? He was genuinely like, did you just wipe my nose? <laughs> but again, I think this is kind of a little bit of, the cameraman felt safe to do that with Craig because he, he knows him and he knows, you know, he's not going to get a punch in the yeah. face. And he's trying to make him look good. But I remember seeing him in fact, same cameraman with me. And, and Craig was like, Ah, you're the chap that wiped my nose. He's like, how am I looking? Anything up there today? <laughs> it's just, it's those kind of things. Um, yeah. uh, there's so many, so many memories. And I loved seeing the success. I always loved seeing him get onto the podium because it was always true joy when, when he did. Um, but I think it's it's more moments of seeing him with his family, seeing the family with him on events. And, yeah. you know, the 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 closeness and and the love they all had together yes. and everyone going out for dinner together and it's it was just it's love it was lovely to see and i was i was extremely lucky to to be part of that on some events and to experience that and yeah just just being there being part of that i think is is the fondest memory of, of all for me yes. um aside from competition it's actually having known him known the family and yeah. i will still very much keep in touch with the family because they, they're, they're special people very special people it clearly you know it's just like oh, you could not um deny it because he was genuinely so special and you know as you say like you know you mentioned his charm um back in the in the mcdonald's and you know it hadn't fully formed yet or possibly had the voice <laughs> yeah. lack of charm back in the mcdonald's 
<laughs> like actually like witnessing that and watch it, watching that over the last, you know, 10 or 12 years or whatever it may be. Um, and it is just a culmination of, of being around like the right people and the right mm. kind of love and kind of nourishment um, and support essentially. And my God, like genuinely what, what a guy to, to see that as proof now and what a life um it was short but my god what he did in those years yeah he, so he fitted a huge amount into those 33 years um you know he did live life to the full and i think that's you know that's it's another legacy isn't it it's a reminder to everyone that for the love of god you know crack on with it just do what you love what enjoy you yourself I, out there because i think it will never leave our 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 sound memory anyway like um those words of life is short you know it just mm. in his voice like um and he has certainly served as that reminder you know he really really has bex what do you miss most about him the chats i think the you know just the random the chats you know being on event with him you're interviewing Craig, for example, okay, you, you have to, you know, you're in your kind of job mode then doing the interview itself. But it was never like an interview with Craig. It was just like a chat. Yeah. Um, and I, that's, I think, you know, I miss that the most. I miss, you know, it was, it, it was obvious, obviously not so much in, in Croatia, <clears throat> which was a very hard event for all of us, for everyone to, to kind of, because we all wanted to, do our best for him and pay as much tribute as we could and do him justice yeah and and none of us felt like we could ever properly do him justice and we were we were you know it was it was hard without him there um but in portugal i really noticed that i really missed him in portugal um i missed the lightness of of going to the media zone and, and chatting and just you know standing at the side of the car and talking just talking yeah. random stuff that's what i'm that's what I will miss the most is it's the friendship side of things rather than anything professionally. Yes, he he was always a joy to interview. He was he was never a challenge to interview because he was a chat, because you knew him so well and he handled himself very well. He was a professional, so he knew how to answer questions, but yeah. there was always something funny that would come out of interviews. Um, something no doubt that I would have to translate to to an international audience um <laughs> but it, it was an easy easy chat mm. whereas like i mentioned in in the the piece we did before oit tanak is my favorite interview because he's the challenge because he yes. makes me think have to use my brain <laughs> whereas with craig it was just shoot the breeze and easy easy chatting um, and I think a lot of journalists found that. I don't remember if I mentioned to you last time um, or not, because even though it's not long ago, a lot has happened, obviously, oh, since. Yeah, yeah. But I remember vividly in Kenya last year, we had a journalist from New Zealand who had come over and it was his first WRC event. Uh -huh. um, and he'd come over to experience WRC in the build up to us going to New Zealand. And he knew rallying very, very well. Um, he just hadn't in the past couple of years because of COVID been able to get out of New Zealand to go anywhere. Yeah. So he's sitting down to have a chat with Craig and it was just after, or not long after, Ireland had beaten the All Blacks in rugby. Mm -hmm. And the first thing this journalist says to Craig is, oh, you know, before we start, must congratulate you. Must congrat you, congr congratulate you on Ireland's win. And I'm sat there and I'm thinking, oh, he's going to have absolutely no idea what this guy's talking about. And Craig was like, oh, he's like, did they beat someone at football? And I'm like, oh, God. <laughs> no, like, no, no way. I was like, Craig is a rugby, all blacks. Oh, right. All blacks, all black, right. Don't know anything. He said, unless he's got a motor, I'm not interested. <laughs> he said, I don't know anything about any other. And he's telling this journalist, I don't know anything about any other sport unless it's got an engine mm -hmm. i'm not bothered and then you know that was him and then when we were in new zealand last year we actually went to watch an all blacks game we were very very lucky that we had um i just arrived into new zealand with julian and we immediately went with craig paul uh elvin 
Scott and Aaron Johnston mm-hmm. to the All Blacks experience, which is kind of in the city centre and it tells you all about the All Blacks themselves. And then we went to an actual match Amazing. in Eden Park, the main stadium in, in Auckland. And, you know, Craig got his own rugby. We all got our own rugby shirts with our name on the back and, you know, the drivers had their numbers on them. And Craig had a go at kicking rugby balls, which I, I have some video of, which was a complete disaster, um, <laughs> which I will I will share at some point. Um, uh, but I just, you know, <laughs> those kind of moments, because um, like I said, there's so many, we did so many different things. Yeah. But I, I remember him being really interested in the, the first 10 minutes of the match. And then he disappeared. <laughs> I didn't see him after that. He went back inside for VIP hospitality and food and <laughs> and, and stuff. What's <laughs> yeah, if he didn't, if he didn't have an exciting. engine, he didn't <laughs> care. If he couldn't hear an engine, he was just like, actually, I'm just going to go back inside. <laughs> this is so bad. <laughs> yeah. He truly was. Like, he couldn't write it, but he was the best ambassador for our sport. Oh, he my God, Absolutely. Fun. You know, and encyclopedic knowledge of rallying. And one thing we always wanted to do on the radio, we never got round to it. It almost happened in Finland one year and then something something horrible had happened. I can't remember what it was now. And it wasn't appropriate to do it. Um, but we wanted to get Craig and Yari Matty together and yeah. like fire questions at them because both of them have such an incredible encyclopedic yeah. knowledge of rallying. Both complete, you know, by their own admission, complete bobble hatters complete geeks yeah. yes um you know and it's we did a social media piece at rally sweden actually we were asking some of the drivers silly questions just for fun um you know who's who's, who's going to cry at a movie everyone said craig and even <laughs> craig said that'll be me that'll be me who's the most likely to cry at a movie that would be me and then you know who one of the questions was who spends the most time you know on social media and i think thierry was like that's Craig watching YouTube videos of old rally cars. <laughs> it's so, so true. He was completely obsessed with the sport. He absolutely lived and breathed it. You know, it was his his everything, his absolute everything. Yeah. And like he, gosh, like he, he just, he was incredible. Like, um, and I think, I think the actually the video footage, and again, it obviously would have been his mum, Jackie, um, with her camcorder <laughs> out again, but where, uh, Ray is calling out the pace notes, and he's like, "There's yes. no age." Um, I think that for me is the is the thing that stood out um, quite strongly over the last few mm. weeks. Where he just adored it from, like he slept, at breathed it, mm. like from such a young age. Yeah. And it really did show um, in the last number of years. Like, and again, like just that never given up attitude, you know. Mm. Um, just such an incredible guy and we genuinely we could talk about him all day long i would say um i think so i i i could i know i know i could it, it i like i love talking about him um and I, th- I think we could and i think that but that's the important thing as well for the family you know jackie said to me you know you know don't don't forget us and, and keep talking about my boy and i will because yeah. there are there are so many stories to tell i will keep talking about him and i will, you know every i think everyone will because it's hard not to because there yeah. are so many great stories and even though it's 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 raw to talk about it now i'll not lie um it's it's still we're still going to talk about him still going to keep keep all those wonderful stories out there because it's he's such a lesson to so many people in how to live your life yeah. in in a sporting way and, and how he handled himself in in tough situations but in in a genuine right. this is how you should go about your life okay maybe not in some aspects he couldn't cook really he <laughs> he sent me a picture of burnt mashed potato once i think it did improve but but how do you burn mashed potato <laughs> i don't know i'm still intrigued as to how he did that the master of the team, but couldn't boy sports. <laughs> and do you know what the genuinely lovely thing is as well is how many people started drinking tea in honor of Craig or having a cup of tea. Um, people like some of the drivers who'd never touched tea before, Thierry, for example, when he came to the house before the funeral, 
he said, oh, you know, I'll, I'll have a cup of tea, Craig style, please. And he'd never, he was like, I don't drink tea. I, he said, I've never really had a cup of tea. And then he had a second, <laughs> so he must have enjoyed it. Exactly. Oh, what a character, what a character. And it genuinely, like, it doesn't make it any better to say it, but he's such a loss. It is such a loss to the, the community, to the world, like, in all, in all honesty. Like, um, and, you know, I do, I am so aware of how, um, although you love chatting and you're so incredibly brilliant at it and ever the professional, but I am so aware of the fact that it, it would be very raw for you to talk about him. And I'm so grateful, um, always grateful for your time, but particularly this evening, Bex, to come on and to be so honest and to, to speak about somebody you love so much so soon after losing them. Like, um, we're so grateful to you. And, you know, as 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 Craig's mum said, like keep keep telling the stories, keep our boy um at the forefront, like and you know that's it. These stories mm. are going to go on forever and last forever. Um, so yeah, thank you for being here and thank you for sharing such beautiful stories. Um, and hopefully there'll be so many more to come over the next few months and years. Yeah, I'm sure there will be a lot of stories that people will will talk about when. You know, when when a few months have passed and and the people are ready to share more, um, and I think it, you know we've all got such incredible you know, photos, video footage of mm. of Craig, which is you know keeps popping up in memories on our phones, and which is lovely to see. Mm. Um, and it, yeah, keep telling the stories. I think you know it's that's the main thrust of it because. Yeah then he's he is with us he's he's there because we're talking about him exactly um so bex we'll end on that again like just thank you so much for your time and thank you so much you're for welcome beautiful stories so great to have you you're welcome